Happy RuneScape anniversary, everyone, and happy 2022. I feel like I haven't seen you all year. <laughs> Can you believe it's been 21 years since the game first opened? It's now old enough to drink and drive in most countries, but something tells me the game enjoyed a few drinks in advance, judging by the looks of it, which is also probably common amongst most adult children becoming 21. Jagex decided to celebrate this incredible achievement by introducing Het's Oasis, or checking out the Duel Arena, depending on how you look at it, which was a piece of content added just after RuneScape 2 was released. Maybe they're trying to slowly revert the game back to how it was in 2001, kind of like how parents want to make their kids go back to being kids when they grow up. <laughs> That was a joke, that's not what's happening here. I am, however, a fan of removing content. I think it's great to recognize that 21 years is a long time and what's being added will at some point in time become old and outdated. Things that were added in the old days of RuneScape Classic or the golden years from 2004 to 2007 that today seems a bit too lackluster compared to the modern content. Removing these old gems have several great benefits too. It's less confusing for new players, it can declutter the game world which opens up the main surface to updated content, and it makes the world seem more active by having less content being constantly empty. Some might argue there's no need to remove old content. It doesn't hurt anybody and it's a waste of dev time. But I think there's far too much content that players rely upon to obtain the various achievements the game offers. Content that is far more of a burden than joyous to the majority of the players, which simply isn't good for any game. And it's not necessarily a matter of the content being boring or bad. It was probably fantastic on its release 15 years ago. But as time goes on, content gets broken. The rewards are no longer worth the effort and the entire idea of having to do these decade-old tasks just seem dreadful. So to help Jagex out and to celebrate the 21-year-old history of the game, I decided to list a few of my own ideas of things that should be amputated from the game. Obviously, this will be my own opinion, like it matters, which it doesn't, but it's my experienced opinion after so many years in the game, and before you figure out that what I say really doesn't matter, I'll do like my drunk uncle at Christmas and quickly force my biased views onto you. Heist! It hurts me to say the name of this minigame in a list like this. I've loved this minigame since the day it was added in 2014, a cops and robbers-esque game about fooling your competitors or catching them in the act of stealing loot. For those of you who've been following my content for a while knows I'm a competitive guy. I like going up against others. So this minigame was spot on for me when it was released. But ever since NXT was introduced in 2016, it's been rather conflicting. Seeing you can see the entire map at any point and by association is really hard to hide when you're on the robber team. Not to mention, the only time there's actual players there, being during a minigame spotlight, they're all AFK, instead of giving the minigame a chance despite it actually being quite entertaining. Jagex refuses to fix its issues seeing nobody plays it, and nobody plays it since Jagex refuses to fix it. It's an evil loop which also caused the death of another amazing minigame, mobilizing armies. Luckily, Heist doesn't take much surface space, but it's still an area easily accessible to new players which causes confusion when there's nobody there to play it. And nobody wants to play it because the rewards are laughable these days. The amount of bonus XP it gives you is far below the amount of actual XP you'd get from the best available training method at your level. I'd say remove the ladder and leave the area empty. This entire region above Falador is in general a rather dead place with not much to look at. I'd vote for reworking the forest in this general area to be more dense. Graphically upgrade the standing stones over here and give it more of a purpose. Currently, it's only used for a clue dig spot and as a marker for lore related to Guthics. It'd be great to include it in the current Elder Gods quest series somehow, just to allow players to interact with it more. Other than that, the area doesn't need any specific content in it more than what's already there, so giving it an exciting environment would be more than enough. Burthorp Games Room The big issue I have with this is how close it is to the spawn for new players. They sign up to this supposedly tiny world, tumble their way over there when exploring the game and get confused by this huge empty area where there's never any other players. I can easily imagine a new player joining the global lobby waiting for somebody to turn up and not understand why nothing's happening. It could really damage the perception the new player would get of what RuneScape is. But okay, it's not in the way for the majority of the current population, right? So why bother removing it seeing hardly anyone would ever notice? 
Well, my good pal Riddle came up with a great idea that I was allowed to steal for this video. Which is also the reason why I decided to feature the games room in this list. Take all the games it currently carries and add it to the various pubs around the world. Remove the basement version and instead play a game of Connect 4 in any pub you'd like. Invite your friends over for a quick game, since that's what you have to do to play those games anyway. Sit by the tables and knock yourselves out. Better yet, maybe someone walks by and notices you playing and wants to join in. Something that would never happen in the Berthorpe Castle basement. And boom, you've made a new friend and you're having a blast! How fun! Conquest The Void's Night Outpost is in my opinion one of the most beautiful areas in the game. It feels alive and mysterious, like something terrible is brewing somewhere on the island. Whatever that terrible is, I'm sure Conquest is a part of it. It's the minigame everyone dreads playing to the degree where, following this one guy, it's even dead during the minigame spotlights. Which says a lot. It's broken, the rewards aren't any good. I don't really think anything would need to be replaced for it either. But I hear you. Conquest is played during a void stairs back, meaning removing it would mess with a quest storyline. However, the quest variant is a modified version and not the actual minigame. So the quest may still be intact, with a minigame tutorial integrated into the quest itself. But the version playable at any time should definitely step down from its position as available content in the game. It's nothing but a burden to the current players. Mage Arena Legitimate question, if I didn't specify if I meant the Mage Arena in the Wilderness or the Mage Training Arena in al Karid, would you know which one I meant? Not that it really matters, because neither are really useful at this point in time. I do think they would do well, however, if they were buffed and merged together. Instead of a boss fight from 2003 in the wilderness and four spellcasting puzzles from 2006 over here, I say put them together. Have the training arena be as is with the potential to fight a demon below the building with the spells you've learned. The rewards from the wilderness version could simply be transferred to the Alcarid one. Still as rewards from defeating the boss, just in a new location. It fits rather well too, considering the dual arena is no longer there, making the mage training arena look a lot more suited to the environment. With a fresh lick of paint, some better rewards, it could be an interesting and viable training method for low-level mages. It would even introduce a new and diverse low-level boss for low-level players, which would only be a great addition to the highly endgame sided boss tier list. Now, the top of the wilderness would look a little bare, admittedly, but it opens up the potential for some really exciting new training methods. Jagex has stated that they will be adding a variety of skilling updates in 2022, and this would allow them to utilize the main world for any of these new additions, without having to step into off-world instances like Sentestan to increase the number of relevant content for the players. Skills that need more attention, like Woodcutting's low XP rates, would have a chance to get some improved training methods at the risk of getting killed. Might even take inspiration from Deep Sea Fishing's Fishing Frenzy activity for high intensive skilling for better XP. That'd be exciting. The World Event Landmarks Oh boy. If I were to make a top 10 anime betrayals video about surface world objects and landmarks, these would be the crown jewel on that list. And I'm sure a lot of people would disagree with me. I mean, they play a big part in RuneScape's lore and I will admit, the Tower of Armadale looks pretty. But let's be fair, it's totally out of place. To me, these landmarks feel as if Jagex introduced an Easter event but forgot to remove it. So when Christmas kicks in, the Easter Bunny is still kind of just hopping around delivering eggs to people. I understand what this is like lore-wise and that it's an important event in the game's history, but Jagex solved the issue with the crater well by creating a hub of activity and the Bandos had to say Prayer Altar, which is oddly next to a different one. The Armadil Tower is still the same as it was on release now many years ago, and it's time to get rid of it. It looks completely randomly located, sticks out of a rather peaceful area and doesn't serve any purposes except speaking to Armadil on the top of it. Armadil himself could be moved to another suitable location, like to the Empyrean Citadel after missing presumed death, meaning the archaeology achievement about speaking to Armadil in his tower to convince him to visit the Stormguard Citadel could still be completed. Just like Northern Falador, the southern part could be a whole lot more exciting. This entire area, even with the Armadil Tower, feels empty and dead, despite there being quite a lot of content in the area. Add some environment through better looking trees, upgraded fences and signs pointing to the various locations. 
Maybe add NPCs in the clan camp trying to recruit each other through their makeshift clans. It'd feel much more alive in an instant. I just feel those five pieces of content are some notable contenders for content worth removing. There are some minor things that we could talk about too, like clearing out some item spawns that's been around since Classic when it was considered rewarding to pick up items from the ground. Who remembers risking your lives for the rune spawns in the Dark Knight's Fortress all the way up in level 15 wilderness? PKers would wait around to kill players attempting to collect these extremely valuable runes, as they'd be vital to low-level magicians, making your potential demise a worthy risk for the reward. I'm not sure if anyone picks these up anymore. Surely some item spawns are very relevant to Iron Man, so clearly I'm not saying remove them all, but I'd support removing those that feel a little too unnecessary these days. There's also the question about exciting content where the XP methods are now a waste of time. Pyramid Plunder was upright killed by safe cracking, for example. Ashdale needs a better purpose in the game. Apatol agility course is useless. Yeah, there's many things we can talk about. The point is, there's clearly a lot of content in the game that needs a touch-up. I'm sure there are some that'll disagree on all of my suggestions and some that would like to see other content removed instead. And that's completely fine. Maybe we should leave it all in place, or maybe we should remove some content. I'm excited to hear what you think about it. You know, besides the soon 10-year-old joke of MTX in EOC, which I'm sure we'd all love to hear again. Talk to me in the comment section below, I'd love to discuss this. My name is Will Miss It, and have a happy new year.